Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to crochet this jumper that I'm wearing right now. This is my Lonsdale jumper pattern. It's a little bit of a revamp of one of my other patterns called the Melbourne jumper. The Melbourne jumper is a lot chunkier. It's definitely made for a much cooler climate. The Lonsdale jumper, which is the one you are here for today is a much lighter version. It's really good for those transition seasons. So like spring and autumn. It is a beginner friendly pattern. All you will need to know is the chain stitch, the half double crochet in the back loop and also the slip stitch. If you know those stitches, you are pretty much good to go. You are going to need some eight ply acrylic yarn or your fiber of choice. I am using Hobby's Kind Feather yarn today in the color light yellow, and you will also need a five millimeter hook. So I am just gonna zoom the camera in a little bit and give you a closer look at the jumper and I will take you through some of its features. Okay, so here she is. As you can see, it is a slightly cropped design, but in the pattern, I will show you how to customize the length if you do want it longer or shorter. It does have a little split detail at the side here. It is crocheted in panels. So you've got a front panel, a back panel, and two sleeve panels, which are then all seamed together. It has a slightly raised neck, nothing too crazy, but if you do want it higher, then I do explain how to achieve a higher neck in the tutorial. And of course, as you can see, it does have this beautiful ribbed texture, which I absolutely love. So if you are interested in making this jumper, just keep on watching. Okay, so to get started, you are going to need your yarn and your hook, and we are just going to be finding the end of that yarn and starting with our foundation chain. Now, the foundation chain will determine the length of your jumper. So your foundation chain should measure from the top of your shoulder, so the shoulder seam, all the way down to where you want the bottom of your jumper to sit on your body, whether that's at your hip, at your waist, at your thigh, however long you want your jumper to be, that is how long you will need to do your foundation chain. Once you have determined the length, we can then start chaining. I'm going to be chaining 80 stitches, but again, you can do more or less depending on how long you want your jumper to be. Here I am at the end of my foundation chain. Again, I chained up 80. What we now wanna do is skip that very first stitch and half double crochet into the second stitch from our hook. So yarning over, skipping that very first stitch and finding that second stitch and going in with a half double crochet. The rest of this row is really, really easy. All we're doing now is one half double crochet in every chain all the way across until we get to the end. Okay, so here I am at the end of row one. What I'm now going to do is chain one and turn my work. Now for row two, we are going to be continuing with one half double crochet in every stitch. But instead of going through the stitch as normal, we are just going to be going through the back loop only. And this is what's gonna give us that beautiful textured ribbed look. So yarning over, finding that back loop and completing a half double crochet. And we're just repeating that in every stitch all the way to the end of the row. So I'll show you a couple more times. Yarning over, finding the back loop and completing a half double crochet. And just repeating that all the way to the end of the row. Here we are at the end of row two. Again, I am just gonna be chaining one and turning my work. And we're just gonna be repeating row two until we have created enough distance between the edge of our shoulder, so where you want your sleeve to start, and the side of our neck. 
I do just want to show you what I'm talking about on a panel that I have already completed. So this part here is going to be our neck section. This is where our neck will go and it will be seamed at the sides together with the back panel. This section here is the part we're working on now. So what I mean when I say that this section needs to measure from the side of your neck to where you want your sleeve to begin, this is what it's going to look like. So neck section, this is our shoulder section, and eventually our sleeve will be coming out from here. Okay, so I just thought I would show you this panel just to clarify what I'm talking about so you can get your row count correct. Again, we are just going to be repeating row two, so one half double crochet in the back loop of every stitch until you have reached your desired row count. For me, it is going to be a row count of 18 altogether, including the rows we have already completed. So once I've done that, I will come back here and I will show you what's next. Okay, so here I am at the end of my 18 rows. Again, this number will be different for you depending on what size you're making, but I will just show you what we're gonna be doing next on the panel I have already completed. So next we're gonna be working on this raised neck section. So obviously this is where our neck will be and then this is going to sit up a little bit higher around our neck. So to get that raised neck section, what we wanna do is once you have reached the end of your first section here that we've just been working on, you wanna chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if you want your raised neck section to be longer, that's totally fine. You would just do more chains here. Um, if you wanted it to be shorter, you would obviously do less chains. I've gone with six and that will give you the look that we just saw on the other panel. Once you've chained six, we are going to turn our work and we wanna start half double crocheting back in this direction. So we are going to skip that very first stitch and we're going to half double crochet into the second stitch from our hook. So yarning over, finding that second chain from our hook and completing a half double crochet. We're now completing one half double crochet in every chain. So for me, it'll be four more. So going into that next chain with a half double crochet and every chain after that. So I will have a total of five half double crochet so far. I'm just gonna count just to make sure I have gone into every one. So one, two, three, four, five. Perfect, that's what we want. And now what we're going to do is continue half double crocheting as we have been in the back loop only for the remainder of our row. So finding that very first stitch and going into that back loop only with a half double crochet. And then we're just continuing that all the way to the end of this row. All right, here I am at the end of that first row of this raised neck section. Now what we're going to do is chain one and turn our work. And we're going to continue doing that exact same thing. So one half double crochet in the back loop only for as many rows as it takes for you to reach the desired neck width of your jumper. So again, I will show you on the panel that I've already made. This is the section we're working on. So you wanna complete as many rows as it takes to get your desired neck width. If you're making it for yourself, you can hold it up to yourself as you go to get the correct measurement. Otherwise, if you are making it for someone else, you probably wanna get them to measure it loosely around their neck um, or head because remember their head will need to fit through this space um, to get the correct measurement and to figure out how many rows you need to do. The most important thing is that you complete an odd amount of rows. So for me, I've completed 23 rows for my next section. Um, again, this will vary just depending on the size you're making, but as a rough guideline, I've completed 23 rows and you wanna make sure that you are completing an odd amount of rows and you'll see why later on. So again, we are just going to be completing one half double crochet in the back loop only until we have reached our desired neck width. 
once I've finished this section, I will come back here and show you what's next. Okay, so here I am at the end of the rows for my next section. So as you can see, I have completed 23 rows, which gives me my required neck width. Now again, this row count will change just depending on what size you're making. As you can see, I have finished at the opposite end to the neck, which is what we want. And as I mentioned before, that's why we wanted to complete an odd number of rows. Now what we're going to do is chain one, which I have already done, and I'm going to turn my work. And we are now just going to continue with those half double crochets in the back loop only. But instead of going all the way to the end of the row, we want to stop so there are still five stitches remaining. So then we will get this same look that we've got on the other side. Here I am at the end of that row. As you can see, I've still got five stitches that I have left unworked because that's what we are trying to match. We're trying to do the exact same as what we did on this side. So it's all nice and even. Now I should have mentioned as well that if you did do a longer neck or a shorter neck, then you will obviously just leave the amount of stitches unworked that you've got on this side so it matches. So now what we wanna do is continue as normal. So chaining one and turning our work. And we're now just going to continue with one half double crochet in the back loop only for the same amount of rows that we completed on our other side. So for me, it's 18 rows, including the one we've just completed. So I now need to go ahead and finish another 17 rows of half double crochet in the back loop only. Okay, so here I am at the end of my final rows. Now what you wanna do is cut your yarn and fasten off. Making sure that ends nice and secure. Now, of course, we will need two of these panels, so go ahead and make another one exactly the same. And once you've done that, come back here and we're going to seam the shoulders. So once you've got your two panels and you're ready to start seaming, you wanna place your panels with the right sides facing in, even though both sides of your panels should look exactly the same, so there really is no wrong or right side. But if you do have a side that you prefer the look of and you would rather that be on the outside of your jumper, make sure for this step it is facing the inside. So we want the wrong sides facing out. So wrong side, wrong side, okay? Once you've done that, you're just gonna take your hook, I'm just using my five millimeter once again, and just popping a slip knot onto our hook and lining our panels up so they are nice and even. We are now going to start seaming the shoulder and the neck section. So we're gonna start at this corner here, seam all the way across and then up the neck. So I just like to do this step with slip stitches, but you could seam however you like. You don't even have to use a crochet hook if you don't want to. You could just use a darning needle or whatever method you prefer. So I'm just going in through both panels right in the corner there, and I am just going to complete a slip stitch. Now we're just gonna continue doing slip stitches all the way across until we get to this next section and then we're gonna do slip stitches up the side of the neck. So just going into the end of the rows, making sure you go through both panels and slip stitching to join. Okay, once you have finished slip stitching all the way across the shoulder and up the neck, you can just cut your yarn and fasten off. We're then going to repeat that exact same process on the other side. So you can flip it over if that's easier. Start from the outside of the shoulder, work your way in and up the neck. I'm gonna do that off camera, but I will just flip this inside out, or right side out, I should say, 
and show you what the seam looks like. So as you can see, you get a really nice, neat and tidy seam, which is what we want. And then that is pretty much what your jumper will look like once you've seamed both sides. So, Okay, once you have seamed both shoulders, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Now, obviously this is the right side and then if we flip it in the other way, this is the wrong side. So now what you wanna do is flip it back in so the wrong side is facing out. And what we wanna do now is seam our sides together. So first of all, you will need to decide how deep you want your sleeve to be. And usually I would allow about 18 centimeters for my sleeve depth. This will depend on number one, your personal preference and number two, the size you're making. So what you'll need to do for this step is to take a tape measure and a stitch marker. And what we're gonna do is measure our sleeve depth. So again, for me, it'll be about 18 centimeters. And then I'm gonna take my stitch marker and just place it in that stitch that marks the 18 centimeter mark. Now we've got a reference for marking out the other side and also for marking the other sleeve. So now what I'm gonna do is count how many stitches the sleeve depth is so then I can match it up on the other side. So for me, it's about 29 stitches. So what I'm gonna do is count 29 stitches starting from the shoulder and working my way down. So I know that everything is matched up nice and even. Once you've counted the same amount of stitches on both sides, you can then take your stitch marker and place it through the stitch on the other side as well and close it up. So then that way your panels are held together and it'll make your life a lot easier when seaming the sides because we'll know that everything is nice and even. So what I'm going to do now is take another stitch marker and for this jumper it does have a little split in the side seam so if you want to leave out this detail you can obviously just start seaming from the bottom edge and work your way up but if you do want to include this little split detail like I'm doing then you need to figure out exactly how big you want that split to be. So again, I'm just taking another stitch marker. I'm going to allow seven stitches for the length of my split. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm then repeating the exact same process as what we just did to work out the sleeve depth. And I'm just gonna place that marker through that seventh stitch for now. And then I'm gonna count another seven stitches on the other side so I know that it's nice and even. Now I can place the marker through that side as well and fasten it up so we know that it's nice and even on both sides. So what we wanna do now is take our five millimeter hook once again and some yarn. And we're just starting off with a slip knot, popping that onto our hook. And we wanna find that stitch that is next to our stitch marker. So we've placed the stitch marker in stitch number seven. So we're gonna find stitch number eight, which obviously is right next to that stitch marker. And going through both panels, we are again just using slip stitches to join our panels together, just like we did for the shoulder and neck section. Um, if you used a different method for the shoulder and neck section, you can obviously just use that same method once again, but this is just what I like to do. So making sure we are going through both panels and lining everything up nice and evenly. This part should be relatively easy because we are just working into the stitches rather than the ends of the rows, which can be a little bit confusing. So we're just going in to each stitch and working our way up the sides of our panels. Again, making sure to go through both panels so we are joining them together. All right, so here I am at my stitch marker. I have just finished slip stitching into the stitches 
before my stitch marker. So now what I'm going to do is fasten off my yarn. So we can cut our yarn and fasten that one off. And we also just want to make sure this end is nice and secure. I like to just go in and just fasten it off once again just to make sure that it is nice and tight and it's not going to come undone. We're now going to repeat that exact same process on the other side of our jumper. So again, marking out the sleeve depth to match the measurements we just did. And again, if you are doing the split detail, you wanna mark out the same amount of stitches and do exactly what we just did, seaming the side. Okay, once you have finished seaming both sides, you should have something that looks like this. Sorry, I can't fit the entire jumper in the frame, but I'm sure you guys get the idea of what it's looking like. So at this point, I would recommend going and trying it on because we now need to figure out how long we want our sleeves to be. So you should have your arm hole here, sleeve hole, whatever you want to call it. And we now want to crochet the section that is going to be our sleeve. Now, keep in mind, this is a drop shoulder design. So Basically, all that means is some of this section will contribute to our sleeve. So that's why I say you should go and try it on now and figure out how long we want our sleeve sections to be. So I have just done that and I've worked out that I want my sleeve to be about 40 centimeters long. So that's not including this section here. So I need to add on an extra 40 centimeters to this section here for it to sit where I want it to sit, which is at my wrist. So we can put this to the side for now. Now what we wanna do is complete a foundation chain of however many chains it takes to reach your desired sleeve length. So the length of the foundation chain will equal the length of your sleeve. So for me, I'm gonna be chaining up about 67 stitches. That's what I believe will give me about a 40 centimeter sleeve length. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and then I will meet you back here after I have completed my foundation chain. Alrighty, once you have finished your foundation chain, you are going to half double crochet in the second stitch from your hook. So skipping that first stitch, just like how we started our front and back panels, we're working the exact same way. So one half double crochet in the second stitch from our hook, and then one half double crochet in every stitch all the way to the end of the row. Here I am at the end of row one. What we're now going to do is chain one and turn our work. And we are now going to be working into the back loop only, again, just like we did for the front and back panels. And we're gonna be doing one half double crochet in the back loop only, all the way until the end of the row. We're then gonna repeat this row until we have reached our desired sleeve width. And what I mean by that is we want to work in rows until we have worked enough rows that our sleeve will be the right width to fit inside our armhole that we created earlier. So basically this will end up being a panel and then at the end we will fold it in half, long sides together and that half measurement should measure the same width as your sleeve depth. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Obviously I will show you what I'm talking about exactly once I have finished my first sleeve panel. So if you're a little bit unsure, just keep watching and that will be the next step. So I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so here I am at the end of my sleeve panel. It's not looking like much at the moment, just a rectangle kind of shape, 
But now what we want to do is seam it down the side here to create a tube or to create our sleeve. So I would recommend leaving a long tail um, or not cutting your yarn yet because we will use this same working yarn to seam our sleeve together. So what you want to do first of all is fold it in half with the long edges laying on top of each other. So it should look something like this. And now what we're going to do is seam our panel together all the way along this edge. So just zooming in a little bit for you guys so you can see what I'm doing. So here I am at the end of my last row of my sleeve panel. Um, just for your information, I did complete 35 rows, but again, this will just vary depending on what size you're making, how deep you made your um, sleeve depth and things like that. But for reference, I did 35 rows. Now I'm just going to chain one. And once you've folded your work together, you can just flip it over because we are now going to be working back along this way to seam our sleeve together. So just like we have done with the other seaming in the pattern, we are just going to be slip stitching. So going through both panels and slip stitching to join. Okay, here we are at the end of the sleeve seaming. So you will be able to see the seam there, but this is gonna be on the inside. So this is the wrong side of our jumper. So what we're gonna do now is turn our sleeve right side out. So you can remove your hook if you need to, to make this easier. So now the seam is on the inside of our sleeve. So as you can see on the outside, you can barely even tell that we have seamed it here. That's what we love to see. Now what you wanna do is grab your jumper panels. So the front and back panels that we've already seamed together and you're gonna turn it wrong side out. So you want the seams on the outside facing you. Okay, now what we're going to do is insert our sleeve lining up where we have seamed with the underarm because even though this seam is not very noticeable, we still want to try and hide it um, as much as we can. So we're going to place that section in the underarm and we're going to insert our sleeve into the armhole on our jumper. So just pushing it in like that, making sure the end with your working yarn is lining up with that underarm there. So again, we're not cutting our yarn. We are going to continue working with this long tail that we have. So to make this easier, you may like to use a stitch marker to keep it held in place. So what I'm going to do is make sure that seam is lined up with my underarm here. And I am going to take a stitch marker and pin that top section to that shoulder seam there to keep it in place. So that way we know when we're joining that everything is lined up nicely because we've got it pinned there and nice and secure. Okay, you could also pin it down here if you like, but we're gonna start crocheting from this end anyway. So as soon as you've done your first stitch, it will be held in place. Once you've done that, we are going to just pop our hook back in so now again we are just going to be slip stitching around the edge of our sleeve to join our sleeve to our front and back panels so i'm just going to chain one and now i'm going to find that underarm section insert my hook and then going through the sleeve slip stitching to join so again, just going into the stitches and the ends of the rows on our sleeve, going through both panels and slip stitching 
to join. Another good thing about placing your stitch marker is it will help you keep on track with joining your sleeve. So you'll know that once you get to the stitch marker, you should have joined half of your sleeve um, because that stitch marker is marking the halfway point. So it just also helps you stay on track and join the sleeve in nice and evenly. So almost at the stitch marker. And so far everything seems to be lining up nicely, which is good. All right, so I am at the stitch marker now, as you can see. So I'm just gonna remove that one now because we don't really need it anymore. And I'm now just going to continue as normal until I am back to where I started. All right, here I am back at the beginning where we started. Now, as you can see, I was playing a game of yarn chicken and I won just. So now what we're gonna do is fasten off so we can pull that loop out and fasten off our work. For extra security, you can go and tie your ends together that's what I like to do just to make sure that that end is super duper secure and it's definitely not going to go anywhere. So once you've pulled your sleeve through, this is what it should look like. This is your seam here, which is going to be on the inside of your jumper. You now just want to repeat that exact same process for your second sleeve. And then once you've done that, you're pretty much finished. So I'm just going to turn this jumper inside out and show you guys what it is looking like so far. So this is the sleeve that we've just attached, obviously. Again, a really nice, neat and tidy seam. And that is what she's looking like so far. Again, sorry I can't fit the whole jumper in the frame but obviously you guys would have seen it at the start of the video and I will show you again at the end so again now what you want to do is repeat this exact same process for the other sleeve I'm gonna do that off camera and once you've done that come back here and we will look at the finished result alrighty I have now finished both sleeves everything is seamed together now all I have to do is go in and sew in all my ends, the job that everyone hates. Um, so once I've done that, I'm gonna pop it on and I will try it on for you guys. I know you have already seen it at the beginning of this video, but I thought I would just show you again, just to refresh your memory and show you how bloody beautiful this jumper has turned out. So once I've sewn in my ends, I will meet you back here and we'll do a little try on. All right, there we have it. She is complete. I absolutely love how this pattern turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. If you did crochet this jumper, please don't forget to tag me in all your makes on social media. I absolutely love seeing what you guys create from my videos and from my patterns. If you're interested, you can come and hang out with me on Facebook in the Talk Yanni to Me Facebook group. I would absolutely love to see you there and if you haven't already please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications so you will be notified of all my future videos but until next time guys stay safe and I will see you later bye